Before showcasing the OSL effect, I'll take a minute to talk about what I did beforehand. So I did a simple base coating of the model, keeping it dark and desaturated, even adding some bluish white to the skin tone to make it look more dead. This is to enhance the contrast the blue light will create later. When highlighting the cloak, I did it with the lantern as the light source when possible, and in a more general way for the rest of it. Some of it will get covered by the blue light, but it will make further steps easier later. You can see the highlights are quite opaque and not smooth at all. To help sell the effect of a dark ambience, I pushed everything down with a black glaze. And I say glaze and not wash because I am spreading the paint to avoid it pulling on the recesses, which will also help blend the highlights on the robes. Now for the more technical part. I establish which parts of the model are exposed to the light, turning the model around and looking from the view of the lamp. I also imagine a bubble of how far I'll have my light travel. We have to take into account that the top of the lantern will block the light reaching the hand and the top of the head. Just the same way the top of the arm is not exposed to the light. These things will vary it from model to model. Above I'll link a previous OSL tutorial so you can have a look at another example. For this model I begin by applying thin down turquoise on the robes, slowly building up the light. I'll begin with the more obvious details like the folds in the robes, avoiding the side of them which are facing away from the lamp. Also the chains, bottom of the hand and so on. I can always add more paint but not remove it, so I'll work slowly and when in doubt I'll just look from the perspective of the lamp to see what is exposed and what not. Here is how the first layer ended up looking. From there I moved on to blue-green. I did the same as before, however this time I imagined a smaller bubble of light. This stage is easier since I just had to go over what I have already painted, so do take your time while mapping out the lights on the first step. Since this jumping color stood out too much, I went back to the turquoise and diluted it just like I did before with the black, going over the blue-green and tuning it down a bit. And for any paint that got into the recesses, I fixed it by mixing some black into the turquoise and re-enhancing the shadows and recesses, as well as the edges of my first light bubble, but with this subtle hint of blue in the black. Here is how the effect is coming out so far. Since the blue green was tuned down through the turquoise wash, we can reapply it, again within a smaller bubble of light, to create more layers of illumination. From here, it is just a matter of repeating, going lighter and reducing the bubble. It is important that no reflection is lighter than the light source, which basically means to keep the white light within the lantern and not make a reflection out of it. If you find you jumped in color too much, just go back a step, with a wash like I did between the turquoise and the blue-green. And remember to re-enhance those shadows if necessary. Here I am doing it once again, going over the surfaces facing away from the light and the recesses. Let us now analyze the end result to better see what I've done. We have white only on the lantern, establishing it as the brightest point. Then blue-green reflecting the chains and the outermost edge of the robes. Same thing on the other side. A bit of blue-green and turquoise highlighting the other folds as well as the face. Turquoise works as general light outside of the race details. And on the recesses, a bit of bluish tint is present through the black and turquoise mix wash. I hope you found this video useful. Only thing left to say is go practice. This technique requires understanding how light works, 
which is key if you're looking to improve your painting skills. Any questions you have, feel free to ask them in the comments.